Good evening everybody and welcome one and all to what is the final GPVW Series Super the League final race of GP 2013 and my goodness we have a wee bit of a cliffhanger. My name's Simon Smith and I'll be taking you through the action this evening as ever with my fellow chumly behind the scenes Simon Melhoosh on cameras extraordinaire and uh yeah, we're here at Interlagos, Brazil for the final round of the championship. And we've got a championship to deal, still decide. Two men are left. Lucas Euler on 319 points. Rude he's to beak on 307. Essentially, if Lucas stays ahead of Rude, he wins. But if Rude wins, then Euler must be fourth or higher to score the championship. Constructors already decided. Midnight have already wrapped that one up with 510 ahead of Nijo and Torrent Motorsports. However, there are some really intriguing battles going on further down the field and some news, obviously, that we need to cover. Uh, this will be Constant's last race in Super League. They've announced that they're not going to be renewing their contract for 2014, which opens up a slot or a team, potentially. I should have known about that. I could have chucked mine in for a hat in the ring there. Um, and they need to see whether or not they're going to get the wooden spoon because uh, with Halcyon already gone on 25, ST could well overtake that for the battle of the back. And obviously Phoenix and Green Stripes are just six points apart too there. And also we've got the battle for... Uh, not really a battle, but Petr Kaza versus Alex Cooper for fourth and fifth in the championships behind Jim Parisis is also worthy. And there's a few battles and scores to settle. You will notice that there are some special liveries here this evening, notably on the Torrent Motorsports that's running a special livery, the Sim no, Sim uh, Simcraft Midnight Motorsport livery, and also some notes on the Hawkeyes and maybe a few dots around the other side because unfortunately we had a shock that wave that hit the motor racing and the sim racing world. Um, that our good friend Sean Edwards passed away sadly in a testing accident, but. Our thoughts and our prayers go out to his family and he is going to be sorely missed. So for the next minute I'm going to keep Stum and let's remember Sean. Okay, you'll be remembered and we will be dedicating this race to you in your honour. Let's hope we see some fantastic racing. It's going to be an absolute hill bender, I feel. And I've even got myself some blonde beer to celebrate. So I feel, let's get this one open. Hey, cheers everyone. Thank you for an awesome 2013. Not in terms of my actual <laughs> racing ability, but it's been a cracking season across the board. Don't forget, now that the open wheel is finished tonight, we'll be going for ITC. So Touring Car Actions kicks off Monday. Again, my dulcet tones will be gracing that broadcast. Sorry all. And I believe Simon will be pulled in for cameras on that too. So, uh... Ah, no, sorry. Lewis Redshaw will be there. Oh, Excellent. That means you'll get to hear random giggles on the broadcast because Simon is secret squirrel. One day we'll get him on the air. We're just moving forward to the race in a second. The top 14 covered by less than a second in qualifying. That is going to show how close it's going to be over this 30, uh, 71 lap race. Please don't let it be 31. We'll be home for dinner. Attention, Global 
So, for the final time of asking for 2013, we are moving forward. Will it be Lucas Euler or will it be Rude Heesterbeek? Neither of them are on the front row. It was a Torrent Motorsport lockout for Petr Kazza and Jim Parisis, but the championship protagonists are third and fourth. And Euler has a fair bit of rear gunner action going on because Alex Cooper, his teammate, is sitting in fifth position with Rude's teammate Tom Vandervoort leaving it too late for his last one in qualifying and end up seventh. So we'll take you through the grid very quickly under these grey murky skies. Petr Kazza grabs the final pole for 2013 for Torrent Motorsports and a TMO front row actually with Parisis alongside. Then it's Rude Heesterbeek and Lucas Euler, our championship rivals, third and fourth. Cooper is fifth of the Alex variety. Lewis Redshaw sixth again upholding Hawkeye and really showing his form this season. And there's a crash car on the grid already, and I think it's Mark Fuller who's not actually... Yeah, he's just getting back to the pits, so drama's already for the Constants in their last race. Constant drama, I think, is what they've had this season. So, Lewis Redshaw is six. Uh, Tom Vandervoort is seven. Sorry, he's for ST, not Constant, but I think that comment still stands. Pavel Luknovsky back in the Nord zone, eighth position. Harley Hamnit, ninth. He was actually fastest in the practice sessions, so I'm not quite sure where that pace has come for in the ST. Jordan Weeks rounds out the top ten. Roy Schroten back in the Constant in 11th position, showcasing himself primed for a seat for 2014, somewhere maybe on the grid. Mikhail Tumala is 14th in the top kernel. 13th after a grid penalty is Hawkeye's Oscari Cantonen. 14th is Bart DeVos, the top green stripes. Ahead of Ben Warren, 15th in the Woods Racing. Frustrated after qualifying, he said that he was nearly half a second up and he dropped it at the last corner. Andrew Morgan, not the BTCC driver, is in 16th for Kernow. Ahead of a Red Archer duo, David Junt ahead of Menno Klont, who returns to the car instead of the usual suspect that fits out that car. Mark Stanton is in 19th position, top constant. Ahead of Timu Soika for Woods. Mark Fuller is just pulling out for ST in 21st position. He'll start from pit lane. And it's Alberto Alvarez and Kieran Ryan in the Phoenixes, 22 and 23, ahead of Vinod Moodley in the Green Stripes Racing, 24. Ryan and Moodley have grid penalties. Alvarez is about a second and a bit off of everyone else's pace. But um, he'll just be hoping he can make it home. And it's problematic as you start from odds the back because you're starting downhill and the grid will concertina up slightly because the front runners are going uphill. There was plenty of carnage in the previous races here. You can't go out wide and here comes the lights for the final time of asking for 2013 GPV WC Super League is... Off and away, and he's the beak pulls out well wide there. It looks as if both TMOs are a little bit tardy. And look at he's the beak slamming into the lead. Well, well, well ahead. Has he gone in deep? No, he's fine ahead of those. Canton and runs out wide in the Hawkeye, and someone else is a wee bit wide towards the back. I think it's Klont, but they are, oh, and Junt, but they're both all through, and it is. He's a big leading away from the TMOs. Vanderbilt, a superb start up to fourth, having a look at Parises, but can't keep it. Luknovsky and Redshaw side by side for seven and eight, but they keep it all together too. And that looked like one of the Kernels. Two Marlers up to temp. So some great action and some great starts. Some winners, some losers. Fuller's now rejoined two towards the um, end of the pit lane, but he's to be beautifully done what he needed to do, as did Vanderbilt, and that really helps because Vanderbilt can now play the championship game if he can, see what he can do to hold up Euler. If he can stay ahead, currently in this situation, it's he's to beat that is champion. As they come round at the end of lap one, it's a long old way to go. As they come up the hill, and it's he's to beat from Casa Parises, Vanderbilt, Euler. Redshaw is all over the back of Euler, though, and that's the closest two as they come over the hill. What's Euler going to do? He's going defensive. Casa has a look at he's to beat very quickly. Euler's been taken by Redshaw. He's going down the inside. Euler hangs on around the outside through the center. It's a beautiful move there by the... Uh, <laughs> Midnight Motorsports and Kasser and Heesterbeek still side by side. Is Kasser through? Yes, he is. Into turn four. Beautifully done. Heesterbeek not champion now. As Redshaw gets past Euler, suddenly both championship rivals struggling slightly. Cooper is right behind in seventh. And he's got to be careful not to interfere too much. 
Uh, Luknovsky's got bound to Marla for 9th and 10th. Canton's 11th. Ben Warren's just got past Bart DeVos for 13th and 14th. Ran out wide and DeVos has retaken the green, uh, the Woods Racings with the green stripes. Hamnet down to 15th. He lost out dramatically on the start. And Stanton and Klontz both out with crashes for Red Archer and Constant. And that's not a good start for the team in their final race. They'll want to have a decent swan song. Up through the long, long, long final curvature of Interlagos. Such a lovely little basin. And here comes Mr. Parisis. Now on that Heesterbeek. Is this going to demote Heesterbeek to third? If it does, then that means that Euler has to just stay in the top 12 to get the championship sewed up. This is not working out well. Schroten and Lignovsky have just swapped positions for 11th and 12th. In fact, Schroten's just gone around Canton and for 10th, just off your screens too. Beautifully done there by the Schroten man. And it is now TMO 1-2 and Kasser is pulling away quite nicely. He's already pulled out a second from Parisis. Now he's to beak his being defended by Tom Vandervoort, but it looks as though Tom may well be the faster of the Nijos at the moment. Followed by Red Short. Euler and Cooper, nose to tail. Weeks is next up, followed by Tomala, Schroten, Canton and Luknovsky. DeVos, Andrew Morgan now up to 14th and Ryan 15. And that's a Woods off. That's Ben Warren. He's just rejoined in 18th position behind Vinod Moodley. He's moved up to 17th by sheer avoidance of everyone else is having their dramas. So 22 still remain, just the two retirements. In separate accidents, they crashed out. But there was plenty of spinning that went on in the practice sessions, actually. More than what I thought there would be. People really running on the ragged edge. It's one of those tracks that can just make you go further and further into something as you go on. Ascari Canton has just retaken Roy Schroeden for 10 and 11. As they come into turn one. But it's Casa 1.3 the gap now between him and Parisis. As he's to be not really being challenged by Vandervoort but they must be kind of sitting there thinking do we send Vandervoort off after the Torrents if he can? Does Heesterbeek have the pace to catch back up and keep up with Parisis? What are they going to do? Because Euler doesn't look like he's quite on the pace of the Nijos at the moment and Cooper is now being joined by Jordan Weeks who is lamenting his qualifying uh, but clearly does have the pace when it comes to the race itself so interesting stuff going on Kieran Ryan and David Junt battling over the final point quite hard as well so plenty of action up and down the field Harley Hamnett's been into the pits and has replaced his front wing he's now back going again in 20 seconds so ST having a torrid time of things sadly over the line they go then Starting lap five, Casa Parisis, he's to beak. Vanderbilt having to defend from Redshaw for five and six. And Euler, Cooper and Weeks there as well. That's quite key. Weeks has to back out of it. Cooper shuts the door quite firmly. But Redshaw again on the back of Vanderbilt. And he <laughs> needs to be rear gunner as best as possible. He said beforehand, I wonder how long it is before I end up in an accident. When you go into a race with that kind of mentality, it's going to kind of make it look like that. Look at Redshaw right the way down. Vanderbilt just dives out of the way and he's round. He's round. Oh my goodness me. Well, it was five laps, Tom, before it was going to happen. He will be absolutely seething inside, but he's key to that. Apparently, Lucas may have rear suspension damage from an earlier piece of contact, so that may be the reason why he's a little bit off colour. Vandervoort rejoins in 30, behind Bart DeVos in the green stripes. So, real trouble was there again for Tom. It's just not been his lucky season. Scared off the road there by Redshaw, who's now up into fourth. And, well, he's to be still not quite in the prime seats. He's got to overcome those TMOs. It is win or fade essentially because there is no better way to ensure that he can have the best shot of the championship as Vanderbilt passes to Voss for 12th down into the centre S. It's a difficult one because he has nothing to lose in all of this whereas Euler really does and if we know that he is slightly walking wounded and Cooper is going to have to be the rear gunner to defend in a way it is going to become a team game but Heesterbeek's kind of lost his main man in that. Tom um, could still very much have a key role in the outcome of this championship, as indeed all the 22 drivers that are still running could potentially do so. 
And nine months out than the special leverage turret motorsport cars. I do like this livery, actually. I think you should consider it for future events because I do like the... It reminds me of tomato sauce and mustard in a hot dog. <laughs> Maybe that's just because I'm a fat boy. Who knows, as Andrew Morgan has just overtaken... Oh, Tom's off again, down in 14th now, 15th position. What happened there? Just coming out of Biko to Pato and round... Oh, yeah, lost it into the final corner. So, problems there for Tom. Rejoining in 16th ahead of Warren, who's just passed Moodley. So, 17-18, can he hold on? Ben Warren's on a recovery drive himself from an earlier incident. But, nope, holds on to that. Timu Twyker's been off the track or into the pits I can't quite work it out but no he's oh Timu Toika's off 22nd position round I think that's Jim Cow no it's not it's the second last corner and I think that could be Timu's end yep Timu retires DNF that was a crabbing suspension by the looks of it or a steering wheel failure because it was all pointing the wrong way so yeah rear damage by the look of it for Timu and that's no surprise so Woods out Ah, off into the wall. We can just see on the behind the scenes stuff. So that's a shame there for Timu. His last drive of the season and possibly the last one for Woods. Who knows? Nothing decided there. NASA leads by 1.4 from Jim. Jim, of course, third in the championship and confirmed third in the championships. So bronze will be going his way. Sure, he would like to sign off with another win. Him and Casa have already had their fair share of trauma between each other. Then it's Easter Beacon Redshaw and it's, ooh, yeah, Euler. Starting to get a little mini train. Cooper's there, Weeks is there, Tumala's reeling them in for the Kernow in eighth position. Then it's Canton and Schroten. Luknovsky's there, then DeVos, Morgan. And then there's a gap back to Junt. But yeah, a good eight seconds there covering fifth to thirteenth. It was close in quali does mean that actually if you drop back a little bit it's going to take a while to close back up again. Andrew Morgan makes a mistake trying to get round DeVos for 12th and 13th. Great drives and some good fresh faces and new names. We always find towards the end of the season that if some drivers have kind of said well that's my lot for this season you get some new people come in and show their talent for future drives. and certainly putting his name on the map for a potential. That change. Ah, it's Lewis Redshaw in the pits. That's very early, lap nine. Tumala's in two for the Kernel, so these are quite clearly planned. I found that when it came to the race, my tyre wear was worse than what I had done in the actual practice itself. I find because... It's one of those courses that you can really slide, and that's bad for Redshaw. He's going to rejoin right alongside the battle between Van der Voort and Ryan, and Van der Voort gets ahead. That's going to curtail Lewis Redshaw. He is not on the red-rimmed option tyres. He's on the primes, so could, in theory, be slightly slower. But who knows? Be out in 14th, though. Uh, Warren and Moodley were battling over 16th and 17th, but Warren stays ahead. Very often we see Moodley in an overtaking mood, but he's quite fancying it today. We'll continue around then. Lap 10. Gasser and he, Paris is still 1.4, matching each other down to the hundredths. Crazy stuff. And it's he's to beak. Oil has still got his gunner. He's 9.5 off though, so he's, whatever suspension damage he has, it may be slight or it may be horrific, but he's hanging on in there. Weeks just settling down behind. Anton and Schroten, Lichnowski there, and DeVos and Morgan so busy battling with each other, they've now dropped off of that. Here comes Redshaw on Van der Voort for 13th and 14th. And someone is off down at turn three who... It's Ben Warren off 18th position that was. And that was... Oh, he ran out wide in turn three, spun it round, smacks the barrier. And he's limping round, doing a little bit of a shake. And yet, yeah, round he goes. And he's in the wall again. There is Ben. And that is a real shame because that could be... Yep, 
double DNF and Alvarez has just crashed out too in the ST doing oh my goodness me Alvarez I think he he's gone off on the straight it's like he smacked the end of the pit lane barrier that's a bizarre accident for only Alberto Alvarez could manage something like that <laughs> so that's a Phoenix out we're now down to 19 runners and riders remaining in this Grand Prix and we're only on lap 11 high attrition rate obviously you get this slight carefree attitude end of season finale as Ross and Morgan continue now over what is 10th and 13th David Junt's in 12th, and he's now holding up Van der Voort and Redshaw slightly, so that's going to be an interesting battle for 12, 13, 14. But still, 1.4 seconds, the gap between Casa and Parisi. So 1, 2, holding each other beautifully, matching each other sector for sector. 10th for 10th, 100 for 100, practically. Still, Euler and Cooper falling away at about a second a lap. Cooper can't really do anything. They've decided, nope, you stay behind. Whether or not he's got the pace to overtake or not is another matter. I have a feeling they need to go defensive, though. So something tells me that maybe team orders isn't quite order of the day completely. Who knows? Use that. Van der Voort gets around David Junt for Tomp, Welp and 13th. Nicely done there. David Junt actually started on the yellow rimmed prime tyres. Looks like he's going to have half a go at trying to get David back actually. Is that look like someone was going off slightly into turn four? I think it was just Morgan going in a weird line. Here and Ryan still in the final point. You've got 19 going. The clearly different strategies being played out because Redshaw in very, very early, and I don't think it's working. That's stuck behind Junt. He needs to get through. I wonder why a lap 9 stop will go so quickly as Kassa in from what was the lead. Third as he hits his box. The front up on the rear. Down he goes. A TMO pit garage. Quite nice. It's a bit of a long wait before he gets back out again. Such a difficult pit lane exit. I cannot underestimate the amount of drama I've had with that pit lane exit. And he does. He comes out just behind Pavel Lupnovsky. So into traffic. And that's key. As behind Morgan and DeVos again go at it. The 10 and 11. Great little scrap they're having. Well clear of Vanderbilt. Well clear of Redshaw who's got round jump for 13th and 14th. But the problem that Kassa will have is, is he going to be limited on speed compared to where Luknovsky is? Schroten's a couple of seconds up the road, so he should be okay. But if Jim's able to stretch it out maybe a lap or two, and if Kassa gets stuck behind Pavel, that could very well change things. But nope, Paris is straight in. So much time to be gained on that pit entry as well. A lot of drivers I heard in practice were kind of saying, wow, people breaking at really early times. Easter Beat keeps on going in that Nijo. As Cooper has his first real problem defending from weeks down into the centre S, he's kept it now for what has became third position. Weeks having a go at Cooper for third and fourth down into turn four. He's going round the outside and he's done it. Cooper is done. Weeks goes round the outside. Can he hold it on? Side by side they go. Beautifully done there by Weeks. If he can hold the inside, he cuts across. And that is a dent potentially in the armour for the Midnight Motorsports cars. Canton's right behind, then Schroeder, Luknovsky. And Parisis is out ahead of Kassa. My goodness me. Told you that would be a problem if they got stuck behind Luknovsky. And he's still there. Are they on the same tyres? Yes, they are. Both on the yellows. Ross and Morgan still behind, battling away like mooses. But... That is key then. Parisis out ahead of Kassa. And Cooper is just getting back past Jordan. Round the outside. Weeks holds on the outside line. Cooper gets it. 
a little bit to different lines. He's looking left going left, trying to get some of the slipstreaming action in Canton and having a little nose in this as well. Is he going to have a lunge down to one? No, Weeks covers that beautifully there. Some real mature driving from Jordan. He's had some scatty races earlier on in the season, but it's slowly been all like congealing back together again. There's the makings of a really great driver in there somewhere. Ooh! <laughs> Don't get your snout in there, Mr. Cooper, because there's only piggy blankets for sniffing. And these double right-handers. You always want to take them slightly faster than what you want to. It always reminds you of like a snaky roller coaster. You know those like wild mouse ones where you kind of, you fling out to one corner, you fling out to the next. Such fun to drive. You crawl over the back of weeks. What this is doing is letting Euler pull out a good second or so's gap and Canton and having half a look and it's Schroes and Luknowski. Baresis and Kassa do as they were. Bradshaw's really lost out now down in 13th. None of them pitting? Nope. Continuing on, so Euler still going. 20% of the race completed. Cooper has another look at Weeks. Jordan holds on for Nord zone. Oh, how their season has gone through peaks and troughs. Someone call it the canyon. Comes Cooper once again. A little sniff on the rear. Pops out, doesn't want any more of that rear end action. But Cooper's gone a little bit in deep because Weeks went out wide. He keeps the inside for the next corner. You can do so much side by side action. It's like a dosy -si doe, and that'll be beautiful if Cooper can do it. But no, forced out to the outside. Weeks' car is unstable. Can he keep on the inside? Oh my goodness me. He then gets pushed out because he tried to chop Cooper a wee bit too harshly and beautifully done there by Alex. Has he gone in deep into the Bico de Pato? No. Nope. All right then, round you and Cow. The second to last corner we're coming into now. Ping. He's got it. And he's pulled out enough of a gap to not get caught on the slipstreaming. What Weeks is now under attack from is Oscari Cantonen. Because he's in trouble. None of the other ones coming in. Weeks pulls into the pits. Cantonen goes up to fourth. That must scare you when they pull off that close. Luknovsky is still ahead of Parisis and Kassa. They aren't able to do anything about that other Nord zone. So clearly straight line speed is one of their big deals. Obviously they're on the slower tyres, but not getting much of a headway. Vanderville in as Weeks leaves. Were they sharing a pit box? It looks like it. <laughs> as poor old Vanderville's day goes from bad to worse. Weeks rejoins just alongside Kieran Ryan for 13th and 14th positions. Kieran is going to try and have a go at the slipstream, but I don't think he's going to get anything of it. Nope, 13th and 14th for him. Vandervoort, or Vandervoo, as the game likes to call him, rejoins in 17th with just the two STs behind him. Like another day of trouble and toil. Used to be continues round again. Lap 17 completed, lap 18 started. Beautifully done from Lucas Euler and Alex Cooper, the sim... Craft Midnight Motorsports 2 and 3 is in their special leveries. In honor of the late Sean Edwards. Then it's fourth position for Oscari Cantonen. Running their Black Ribbon 2. Then it's Roy Schroten in fifth for Constant. Parisis goes through the inside of Luknovsky. Beautifully done there for sixth and seventh. Luknovsky fancying half a go back through. That could be a bit of drama. Parisis goes to defend. Luknovsky's going to have a little bit of a better run round the second half of that one, turn five. But nope, Parisis keeps it. Kassa right onto the back. You almost have to strike while the iron's hot on those kind of things because otherwise you start to get fixated on the car behind. Vinod Moodley leaves the pits from 17th position in the green stripes. That's one less for Van der Voo to deal with. <clears throat> Ten seconds, the gap between Heesterbeek and Euler. Euler loving the fact that he didn't have to deal with a little train behind him. But Cooper, I think that shows that Cooper is holding on behind because he's straight onto the back of Euler, but he's not doing anything about him. Playing the team game. He knows what side his bread is buttered if he fancies a drive in 2014. Roy Schroten in from fifth position. Someone give that guy a drive for 2014. As Petter passes Pavel. 
There's a tongue twister for you after you've had a few pints. And Morgan and Redshaw side by side for 7th and 8th. Redshaw goes through on that one too. So a couple of moves being done all at once. Morgan fancying a go back through. Redshaw having to go super, super defensive. Practically got a cape on. And Morgan gets on the grass under braking. Somehow saves it. Kerno looks a wee bit like a skippy man as Weeks gets out ahead of Schroten. Only just. Roy really has gained there. Weeks losing out slightly. Here and Ryan has pitted and rejoined in 16th position too. Just ahead of Harley Hamnet. He's recovering from a problem. And Minod Moodley's back in for the second time in two laps. Not quite sure what's happened there for Vinod. But he's in trouble as Cooper and Canton and pop into the pits from third and fourth. Midnight versus Hawkeye on the pit cruise. I think we know who's winning that one. Through goes Parisis, Kassa and Luknovsky. Who's away? It's Cooper. Who's away? It looks a little bit slow on the uptake, but I think it's just the relatives of the pit lane there. Cooper stays ahead of Canton. I thought there'd be more of a difference there in pit cruise, but obviously not. Oh, Cooper, two wheels on the grass around the part of the exit of the pit lane, but he's kept it all in check. Now you can see Redshaw, Morgan and Junt all flying through. So Redshaw still in sixth position and ahead of that little scrabble. I don't think it's going to keep him up with the podium positions currently at the moment. He's hmm, 25 off of Easterbeak. He's just popped a lap on Mark Fuller and the beak is in. Recharges Pekka. And he's doing everything he possibly can to put himself in the best possible situation for the championship, depending on whatever else happens around you. At this point in the championship, it really is what can you do for your own chances? And you kind of have to think, I can't change what's going on around me. I can't deal with the fact that, yes, I know Euler may be in trouble as he's in the pits, as is Luknovsky as well. And Luknovsky very slow in the pits. Very slow. Oh, and Junts in right behind Morgan. Very, very close there. But he's lost out. Shocking amount of time there versus them. And that's Cooper ahead and Cantonen ahead of Euler. Oh, dear. The Lucas... Behind his teammate, I'm thinking he's probably fixed a wee bit of damage. I'd imagine that's what Luknovsky's had problems with because he's lost out dramatically because Schroten and Tumala and Weeks have gone through there. So problems for Bavel. Bart DeVos is up into 12 ahead of David Junt. Vandervoort's right behind. Morgan's rejoined in 15th position, but is he missing a front wing? Oh, he's missing a wheel. He's gone off in the pits. He's out. He's out, spinning through. He's done that exit in the pit lane. What an absolute trial. An error and epic fail. Crashing out on the pit lane exit. My name is not David Coulthard. And that's bizarre because he'd actually got round the corner, floored it, and then smacked it one. Didn't quite believe it and then went off down at turn four. So Andrew Morgan... Well, maybe he is taking lessons from the BTCC guy of the same name. As Vinod Moodley's in for a game. That's the third pit stop in three or four laps. So I'm not quite sure what Vinod's up to, but it's his own Vinod way <laughs> that he's doing it. But there's still points to be had, potentially, because they are dropping like flies in this race, quite literally. As Vinod rejoins just ahead of the Schroten and Tumala batter for 9 and 10. So the order, then. Pretty much everyone, if not everyone now, has pitted. And it is Parisis leading by 1.3 from Petr Kassar. Almost exact reverse or positions and times. Easterbeek is four seconds behind in third position. This is not enough for his championship at the moment. Redshaw is in fourth. He's lost out a bit, eight seconds off with that early switchover and problems with traffic. Then it's Cooper in fifth. Canton in sixth. How is he going to quite manoeuvre that one round? I'm not sure. But Cantonen is actually back on another set of the option tyres, whereas Cooper is on the primes. So Cantonen is going to be a bit more feisty. Feisty one. Euler is in seventh position. But Cantonen really close up there. Then it's Weeks, Schroten, Tumala, Bavel, Luknovsky, then DeVos, Junt and Van der Voel are having their little scrap over 12, 13, 14. Harley Hamnet is in 15 for ST, ahead of Kieran Ryan and Mark Fuller. 
Van der Voort's going past Junt. Through for 13th and 14th. Junt giving that one a bit too easily, actually. I wonder if he thought he was being lapped. <laughs> Never mind. One up for Tom. Anyone coming to GPVWC Day? If you've got a spare room or a spare, a spare floor that I could stay in, that would be amazing. If I can get my leave work. I still plan on being ridiculous and outrageous. We approach lap 24 starting for Jim. That is closing. Now down to exactly a second. And Canton and having a go. No, he's not. He's off. Off, off, off he goes. That's going to help Euler because he's got the momentum. Through he goes. Canton and down a position. He's got the tyres to have a go to go back through again. Oh, careful. Don't hit the championship leader. <laughs> Must be very difficult because in some ways... Lucas already being hit and having some damage apparently must think I'll just let them go as Tom van der Voort takes parts of us for 12 and 13 but you must think ooh, I need to stand my ground somehow <laughs> very very difficult way of dealing with the psychology of I've got a lot to lose <laughs> So currently as it stands, Mr. Beek's in third, Euler is above 12th position, it is game, set, match for the Simcraft Midnight Motorsport driver. To a long, long way to go. 18 runners and riders remaining. Euler looks like he's got the legs on Cantonen for the time being. Having raced against Cantonen for at least a couple of corners in Formula Challenge. He's a decisive little man. Big man. I've never seen a picture of him. A giant midget. Or a midget giant. Knows. He's decisive and when he sees a line he goes for it. Doesn't dilly. Or dally. Or shilly or shally. Do, 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 do. Boom, boom. And you can see the difference there, entire grip between Euler and Canton, and possibly a little bit of car sorting out as well. But Canton and round the last couple of corners, it is all about managing to get a decent exit out of here if you can. Carrying that power up, Canton must be a little bit, don't get on the curb because that's what happened to him last time. That's why he's behind Euler now. But he's right up into the rear wing of Euler. Is he going to pull out and have a go down into the centre S? No. Euler able to cover that one. Maybe turn four is the place to do it. Redshaw's caught with Easterbeak, by the way. They're down to just 1.4 seconds. That'll be an interesting one to see. Oscari takes another wee peekaboo. Down into four. And after bigging up his decisive action, he's not taking any now. <laughs> Tom van der Voort is on Pavel Duknovsky side by side for 11th and 12th. Through he goes quite nicely and takes the position. And David Junt has just taken 13th from Bart De Vos just behind them too. So De Vos down to 14, Junt to 13th position. Red Arch are desperate to consolidate their positions in the championship. As Redshaw continues to reel in Heesterbeek. Quite a quick rate, actually. Gap as they cross the line now. Yeah, 1.1 seconds. It was 1.4. Antonin on the back of Euler once again. Just not quite got that top end. But affect the move. It happened in other races. People going for the straight line speed, knowing that in the slower sections it's much more difficult to get round the car, but because you've got track position, you only need to be good for that section. Kind of hold them off. 
Oh, Junt and DeVos again side by side, 13 and 14. Junt retakes DeVos. DeVos having another go to try and get back through. Good racing between the Red Archer and Green Stripes as they go side by side, tet to tet, toe to toe. Junt struggles again. 1.4 the gap between the Torrent Motorsport guys at the top as Redshaw has his first look at Heasterbeak down into the Senna S. What are we going to do with Canton and Euler? This looks like Canton's best go so far. No. Yes. No. <laughs> ah. And Lewis is passed. Heasterbeak down into turn four. Beautifully done there. Up into third goes the Hawkeye. And if that's how it's going to be, Heasterbeak is now no longer able to become champion. The red short could very well have just changed the face of the championship entirely there with that singular move. Junt and DeVos again battling side by side. The 13th and 14th, although Junt I think has got it this time. Indeed he has. No, he hasn't. Oh, no, he hasn't. Oh, yes, he has. Punch and Judy. Maurice just does his second fastest lap in a row. Beautifully done. This is what he does best. 1.6 now the gap between him and Kassa. Petter keeping him very much within limits and within sight. They need to step it up a temp for two if he wants to ensure that he's right on the tail if he wants to do what was done to him get the old leapfrog action going and it's doing 15 Ryan 16 moodly 17 a lap down by having three pit stops bizarrely very close this field Ran his circuit actually, always, it always provides close racing and close lap times. Cantonen continues to shadow Euler. Any tweet comments? You're more than welcome to tweet me at, at Saturamon. Always like to hear how you're going and that's Peter Kassa laying down his mark and saying that is what I want to do and it gaps down to 1.1. Mr. Beak moves up to third because Mr. Redshaw is in. He had a massively early tyre change on lap 9. Now he's in again, lap 30. We made the tyres last and he's gone out in another set of the yellow rimmed primes. What is he rejoining? He's just going to get out. He's going to get out well clear of Mikhail Tumala. He's out in eighth. Jordan Weeks two seconds up the road. That may cause him issues because Weeks was one of the last to pit. So he may find himself a bit limited if he can't get round him. Van der Voort's up onto the back of Schroten for 10 and 11 as well. So we'll watch that one in a bit. What's the lap times this time round? Mm, Paris is two temps faster than Casa. The TMOs play their own game up front. Euler still defending from Cantonen. Cantonen clearly faster. Cannot find a way through. Despite having the faster tyres, he's not tripped out for the straight line speed. So struggles around that final sector. Here comes Van der Voort in 11th position on Schroten. Schroten goes to the inside and Van der Voort just bounces through as Tumala pits from what was 9th position. He's now into 11. Tom beautifully done there. So it's Parisis ahead of Kassa. Big Cooper, Euler, Canton and Weeks, Redshaw, Van der Voort, Schroten. Rydnowski, DeVos, David Junt, 13th position, still battling beautifully. Apparently, this is his last ra race in a three-year stint for Red Archer, where he goes to in future. Who only knows? Yeah, last race for him. All change going on.
it does feel like a bit of an end of an era. Continues to hold on to Euler at 32. They're about to start. Oh, DeVos off 13th position. That's not how you take the final corner for the Green Stripes Racing. No longer. <laughs> oh, dearie me. So, real problems. I've seen actually during the practice sessions that was the place where most people were having problems. The last two corners. Then it was turn four. Turn four invites you to go in so much faster than what you really should. And you can't help it as well because it kind of tightens a bit on the apex before you come back out into a nice open road. Like a little hallelujah moment. <laughs> Euler, still ahead of Cantonen. Here comes Kassa into the pits. Right, Motorsport in a special livery here today. Related to the passing of our friend Sean Edwards and a little bit juddery on the old exit. Must be a bit difficult actually to be the last pit garage on this one because you're immediately into a really awkward turn, especially if you're going to take it dead on the inside because there's a lot of gradient that hits you straight away. But that tells you how well Torrent are doing. He's out before they even get Cooper, Euler, and Canton and through. Redshaw is not catching weeks, dropping away. So, eighth position for Redshaw. I thought he'd be stuck a little bit, but he's not. And we've lost Mark Fuller in the ST somewhere along the line too. So Mark Fuller out of the race for ST, suspension failure. He's crashed it unfortunately as in comes Paresis. That was a few laps ago. Jim in. He's gone one later again than Petter. Worked for him last time. Rude's gone through to take the lead currently. We know he's on a different strategy. Reese is going around the awkward pits as Casa just comes into the entry of the Senna S. This is going to look increasingly like Jim is keeping the lead. Indeed he does so. He pops out well clear as Casa's just coming around the turn. Behind him is Cooper. And it's Euler and Cantonen. The TMO very much in control of this final race of the season. It's been a bit of a plight for them because they started off with a terrible car this year and were really punching above their weight. And you'd almost be forgiven of thinking that actually, now that the car is good, um, how much has really changed on the results front. But they've really been able to maximise a lot of their poorer chances, which has kind of meant that when the races have gone better, you've not noticed so much of a progression. It's been quite interesting to see. I suppose that's the, the difference between a so-so driver and some of the greats that race here on GPVWC Super League. Able to make the best of a bad situation and just keep on going. I think Tom van der Voo will know quite a lot about. Now up to ninth, having disposed of Roy Schroten. Here comes Ganson and on Euler once again. Does not have the confidence to go in on a late breaks. And I suppose if you know that that's the championship leader and you don't want to affect the championship outcome, you're not going to do one of those last late minute dives up the inside that you just think, cut out of my way! <laughs> Steam through. Very difficult, but Brood leading by 5.7 seconds from Paresis. Cassa's lost out actually in that pit stop again by another one and a half seconds. Clearly, staying out later is helping. Everyone else pretty much spreading themselves out. But again, just like how it was in qualifying, where the top 14 were covered by less than a second, we're on lap 35, and the top 13 are covered by 39 seconds. So that, I think, speaks volumes for exactly how tight the field is. At the moment, I know he's to beak is yet to pit and he's the leader and it's slightly aggregated, but it's still one of the closest, if not the closest, field spread that we've had so far 
2013. And if you like the look of this and you want to get involved, pop yourself along to gpvwc.com, get, get yourself signed up. We are running off-season stuff. We've got touring cars starting on Monday with myself and cameraman extraordinaire Simon Millerish, who deserves a big round of applause for doing cameras. In fact, I will have a swig of beer for you, Chumley. Oh. His nose. And uh, we'll be there from Monday. I think it's 8 o'clock start. Rimrace.tv, as always. Enjoy a bit of team top action. Roll that to the cookie monster. No, that's not code for the other half. <laughs> this rate as well, if we have any more retirements, we'll start getting everyone who's finishing scoring as well. Minute and moodly outside the point scoring positions. We've had that a few times, notably France, I remember. And many core, I think we only had about 12 or 11 finishes, such was the rate of attrition. Yeah, come on down, join the touring car if you want to, or get chatting amongst the other people. There's going to be plenty of seats and racing coming for 2013, and it's worthwhile getting. A little bit of a heads up on how things work before the season kicks off. I for one will be there. There's an endorsement you don't get every day. <laughs> no, no, no. So Euler, that's about the furthest he's got away from Ascari Canton. If Ascari's tyres are finally starting to show a wee bit of wear. As I said earlier on, the tyre wear was a bit more extreme than what I think a lot of people thought was originally going to happen. As Canton runs out wide onto the kerb, he should be wary of that. He's already been spat out from there once so far this evening. One of those circuits that you have a fantastic flow with, sadly, is that's a Phoenix. Here and Ryan exiting the pits. And he's going to come out behind Hardy Hamnet. So he rejoins in 16th. Van der Voort is in. Oh, so is Weeks, and they've touched exiting the pits, I think. Was that a little, little love tap? Let me just do a little bit of a replay to see. So Weeks was in. Van der Voort had to take such an aggressive pit in. Oh, just the tiniest, I think, of misses between Weeks. And Van der Voort. So Weeks rejoins in 10, Junts 11, Van der Voort is in 12th, De Vos is in from 13th. That will push Tumala up. Tumala's really lost out, actually. I wonder if he's been off the road or something, because he was running in the top 10 earlier, and now he's only 13th and just rejoining ahead of De Vos. So that'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Got more speed than what his position has let himself believe to be. And I think some drivers will be wondering exactly where they'll be next year. Mikhail Tumala, he's had a good few races, done quite well for the Kerno team. Will we see him on the grid in 2014? Will we see Bart De Vos in? He's switched around teams like I've switched around filthy underwear this season. Will he be racing? And more importantly, where will he be racing? Clearly a talented man. There's always people pushing up through the ranks and can you hold on to your seat? Good test drivers going on. There's been some poor test drivers as well. I normally do enjoy watching Scott Bennett fails going on. There's a place to park it and bin it. He will find it for you. Harley Hamnet, 15th position. We wowed about how the Aussie was driving when he first came into... ST team this season. Not quite lived up to the initial races. He's had some real ragged, edgy performances. This being one of them. Fastest in practice. Nowhere... Uh, sorry, ninth in quality and just nowhere in the race down in 15th. Is that a rough diamond that another team is going to be prepared to help smooth out for 2014? The Schroten goes up to 7 because Oscari Canton and Pitts Novsky goes through too.
Luknovsky's another one that intrigues me. And Weeks, actually, to some extent as well. That Nord Zone team, it's so difficult to work out whether or not they're doing a great job or a, a good job or a mediocre one or a poor one because their season has just been one of extremes where sometimes they're struggling to get in the top 20 on the grid other times they're busy battling for pole and it seems so hit and miss something needs to smooth out there I think as we enter lap 41 Easter Beak still leads from Parisis Cass is third Cooper 4 or Ella 5 that midnight lineup. What will become of that? Redshaw is in seven. Will he stay with Hawkeye? Made his cards very close to his chest on to where he's going to be going. Brittany has an ample chest. As Schroten comes in, where will the Schrotens be hanging this time next year? Junt's in behind him too. Junt's actually really closed up on Schroten. That's going to help out Tom, because that gets rid of two guys for him. So, Redshaw is definitely going elsewhere. I don't know where. Junt's actually got a much better pit crew in that Red Archer than the Constant. And Constant will want points. It's their final race. Said it before. It'd be nice for them to go out with a bang. They're battling ST over the wooden spoon positions. Halcyon already fallen by the wayside earlier on after the Belgian Grand Prix. Constant have been a one car team for a long while. It was the first time that they had two cars here for a very long time. Italy. Bill Rude Heesterbeek continues on his way. Rude's championship really came into its own in the middle third of the season. Three wins on the trot, two seconds, two thirds, and then a, tri a trio of seconds. Not once has he finished outside the top six. I think that says a great deal about Rude's ability to bring a car home regardless of whatever's going on. It's lap 42. Roy Schroten's back in the pits again. Oh dear. What's gone on for Roy? Actually fitting stuff. Didn't look like he had some kind of issues there. But I wonder if he fitted the wrong tyres or the tyres didn't go on. Because that's the second car that I've seen come in and out and in and out. He's going to rejoin right alongside Harley Hamnet. Or 14th and 15th. Can he hold on to it? He's got enough of a momentum. Hamnet's going to go for it anyway. Harley stays behind the Schrotens for the time being. Needs to get his brother on board, I think. We need a team Schroten. So Hamnet's got the temp in the tyres. Schroten needs to defend that one for a little while to make sure that he can stay ahead. That will help a few of the drivers. Oscari Canton and has got Jordan Weeks right on him, actually, as well. So that's interesting to see. Here comes Jordan Weeks. Cantonen really struggling. And look, Weeks round the outside. That's bizarre. Has Cantonen got some kind of problem? Because that was such an early break. Or J Jordan was just so rebel <laughs> against the, the breaking markers that he just completely took everyone by surprise. Great <laughs> ragged move. I was on edge. Cantonen now appears to be up to speed. But yeah, problems there for Ascari. Tom Vandervoort shaking his car around behind in 10th. He's about to join that little scrapperoo. I wonder a switcheroo, I wonder. As he's to beak the gap now between him and Parisis up to 9.1 seconds, which is the largest it's been for a while. So this is working out for Rude to stay out slightly longer. It's still problematical, but does this mean that potentially Rude may try and go one stop less? Worst while thinking of. Strategies could play an important role in how this works out because obviously if it's working out how it is now, Euler would not be champion and it would be Rude Heesterbeek. But obviously his person in front of him is Alex Cooper, who I'm sure 
if he wants to have a midnight seat for 2014, would bow <laughs> quite quickly <laughs> and let it through. Popping laps. Moodley has gone two down now for green stripes. Oh, what's the gone on there? That's Harley Hamlet in trouble. Oh, it was him moving over to be lapped by the Torrent drivers. They get round both himself and Schroten. Weeks pulling well away from Cantonen, so I wonder if Oscari's got some kind of troubles. Troubles. Smoke on the water. So for Lucas Euler in his championship battle, I think it's been, well, he's had a retirement and an eighth place, which is really what has been the spanner in his works. And if anything, apart from Malaysia, where he retired, which was round two, his kind of form peaked at the very beginning, where he had three wins on the trot at Austria, Hungary and Spain third and then a quartet of seconds and fastest laps oh sorry poles and fastest laps he does like to rack them up Vettelesque yep now between he's to beacon Paris is up to 10 seconds since then he's bounced back with a couple of wins he won last time out in Japan which really did help out his championship against he's to beak here comes tom vandervoort he's to beak's teammate on oscari canton and down the inside as they come across the line and through he goes taking the tie to the Navergin route Get right up against that pit lane wall nicely done canton and not been able to say boo to a goose down a straight to turn four for anyone else not saying boo to tom either here comes Rude in from the lead for Nijo. Ooh, Paris is trying to get a slipstream on Bart de Vos there. He's lucky that that didn't go wrong. He's to beak down to third already. And that was a lot of fuel. That was a long stop. I think he may try and go to the end or to the very, very end as far as possible. He's still got to put on the option tyre because that's two pit stops with yellow rimmed I think I'll have to double check that actually because he went yeah because he went to lap 20 so interesting there for Rude what he's doing Brucis and Casa then lead the way he's to be third Redshaw four Cooper Euler Weeks Van der Voort Cantonen Luknovsky's in 10th for Nord zone Grant will be 11 Sumala 12 De Vos Hamnit, Schroten, Ryan, and Vinod Moodley is your last runner. Our retirement so far is Fuller, Morgan, Warren, Alvarez, Twerker, Klont, and Stanton. Does get out ahead of Junt, so that works out nicely for him. Rhesus and Casa, 1.7 separating them at the moment. So the gap has again just shrunk down ever so slightly. Casa appears to be faster at the opening half of their stints. Ah, Rude started on options. Doesn't have to pit any more, says David Fiduk, who's hiding. Babaroo. I hope that didn't go out to everyone, because I think it did. David, you might not want to talk in the race chat. <laughs> bad boy, bad boy. What you gonna do? Oh, that's a ray from the grave, isn't it? So... We think he's going to the end. I could hear a slight hmm in the tone of voice coming from cameraman extraordinaire Simon Milwish, who normally has the insider goss and knowledge of everything going. We will see. In which case, he's only 11.3 behind the Torrent Motorsports, and this race is most definitely on. He's got to make sure... Oh, Dark the Voss facing the wrong way at the final... Oh, what? how on earth has he managed to do that? 
That's around the big kinks. Yeah, that was like an Alonso slash Weber, but it's weird. It's like, yeah, lagged out and then it's just rejoined back on the track. Going very slowly. Is he coming into the pits? I hope no one else wants to pit during that point. Nope. Back on again. Is he pulling off? Is he? What is he doing? I didn't give him beer. I did not give him beer. I promise you that. Now he's back going. That must be some kind of computer issue. Oh! Computer pedal issue? Hmm. Well, he's out. And that has put paid to Green Stripes being in the points. Vinod Moodley is the last runner two laps down, but he is the only person not in the points. Poor old Vinod. Subject of many a scorning thing in the old pit lane. I've raced against him back in 2010 in a different league um, and actually found him to be quite a gentlemanly racer. I think now that he's up on the high end of stuff, I used to beat him. Does that mean that I could potentially only be two or three laps down on a race? That would be amazing. Um, he also actually scored six points this season. The problem is with Vinod is that he's retired more times than he's finished. So, obviously there's a lot to be desired in the reliability stakes. Reliability has definitely played its part for some people. Tom Vandervoort had three retirements on the trot. And since then, has only had a 7th, 11th and a 10th. Which is why his championship has really, really faded out. Other people, like Bart DeVos, who's just racked up his 6th retirement of the season, has kind of had it splattered out. Boyd Bryson was another one who has been in the car almost all of the season until the very end, this last race, the other South African. And he's retired a fair amount too, so... Yeah, and Christoph Lichtenstein retired more than he finished, practically, too. So there's a few people that suffer from that. Miles Dixon only ever finished one race this season. He retired from the other eight. <laughs> oh, dear. No wonder ST swapped him out. 70% <laughs> race fleet completed. Run lap 51 of 71, and it's Parisis leading. Redshaw's in the pits again for Hawkeye. What was fourth position? Cooper and Euler go through. Schroten's off the track there down at turn one. He's got back going again now. But it's Parisis leads by 1.4 seconds from Kassa. He's the Beaks in third. 14 seconds off. He's heavy with fuel and he's got to make sure he stays about 20 seconds behind. Or within 20 seconds behind Parisis and Kassa to withstand a chance of being able to bring it home to the end, I think. Cooper is in four, Euler five, expect that to swap if need be. Then, oh, Tom Vandervoort's off in seven, Redshaw is in sixth. And that's allowed weeks through and Vandervoort's off again. As he had a clout from someone, I wonder, because he, oh, he's retired. Oh, yeah, clout with Jordan. They came together, lagged into each other, and then round and off he went. Tom Vandervoort, I think, has left in disgust. Second retirement of the season. Uh, sorry, fourth retirement of the season for Tom. And that will put Vinod Moodley into the points if he can keep it going. Tumala's pulling out from the pits in what is now 13th position for him. So both him and Schroten really lost out. Harley Hamnet now up to 11th. So whatever problems he had earlier on in the race quickly being resolved. Ah, Kieran... Ryan has lagged across the track and smacked Bart DeVos is apparently why that phantom crash happened. So interesting stuff and looking at Kieran. Still going alright for me but problems potentially. So I did see someone lagging earlier on actually going like just through the track in general. That was why I got taken out in the FC race at the start, someone lagged in through the middle of the track and took out myself and Chris Williamson, who is a fellow test driver. David Junt versus Lipnowski for 10th and 9th position. Lipnowski holds that one for the time being. As Cass is into the pits and he's to beak his out ahead. That is key. That is key because they're always one lap apart, Cassa and Parisis. And he's to beak is well clear. 
by a couple of seconds. Casa was three seconds down on Parisis. It's actually going to be real touch and go, maybe, between Heesterbeek and Parisis. Heesterbeek needs to pull out a lap of his life to ensure that he can stay ahead of Parisis. Casa's rejoined on the option tyres again. 19 laps to go. Doesn't want to risk it. Parisis takes a bit of a weird line in the final corner. That may not help him. But he's to be is so heavy with fuel, he needs to go Weight Watchers. And that could very well decide what's gone on there. Parisis in. This could be key. Well, I wish our cameraman is doing a little bit of a tortoise heading with that pit lane <laughs> entry. I have to say, I'm always extra conscious of it too. And that's why I probably am not the best racing driver out there. Well, not the only reason. Here comes Heesterbeek, though. Across the line, Parisis is leaving. They're going round the turn ones and twos together. Heesterbeek slightly ahead, but he's got a longer way round turn three. It's going to be ever so close. Has Heesterbeek got it? Yes, he has. Just about. He's kept ahead of the Torrent Motorsports. This championship suddenly is back on depending on what Midnight Motorsport want to do and what Lewis Redshaw potentially could do to Euler and Co. So very interestingly now, Heesterbeek doing everything that he can to ensure he's in the best place to see what happens with this championship. We're going down to the wire. 54 of 71 we're on. 75% race completion. Oh, Luknovsky and Junt nearly collecting each other in the final kink on the start-finish straight. That was close. Here comes Junt through for ninth position on Luknovsky. Got it. Done it. Nicely done there by David, but that was near collision. Excuse me, a bit earlier on. Too much beer. Luknovsky's not done yet. <laughs> is he going to try and go any outside? Yes, he is. Junk gives him the room. Wisely done there. He wants a decent top 10 finish to sign off from Red Archer. At the moment, he's on for it because him and Luknovsky are going side by side again. Beautiful move there by David. Just about held on. Have we got problems elsewhere? Cameraman is screaming in the background. No, no, we're all right. We're all right. He was just reacting to that awesome move as well. Heesterbeek and Heesterbeek closing down. So Junt's got that one for now. Back up to the lead because Heesterbeek is being slightly stalked. Remember, he was ahead at the beginning after the demon start that he got in that Nijo from third on the grid. Or fourth on the grid. Get him to the Greek indeed. So, Heresis. Okay, I'll get him to the Greek. There's this weird video that's going around about Russell Brand trying to be a politician. I have not lolled so much in my life. Although he does have a point that Boris Johnson is only a politician and gets away with it because he too has screwed up hair and a weird bubbly voice. So. That is true. Anyone could be an MP. A monkey person. So. Heresis closing him in. Half a second, the gap. Cassas closing back down to 2.6 behind Cooper and Euler. They're closing up quite nicely too. It looks as though yeah, Euler's closing up onto the back of Cooper. Just to be safe, I'm sure. So, I think it will. we will have team orders play out there. I think they've been playing the race, to be fair. So, Harley Hamnet in from 11th position for his stop in the ST. And he's to beat now up to 8 temps off of Parisis. So Parisis must have had a bit of a dodgy run out of the final turn because he dropped back a wee bit there. 15 to go. Stroten's up to 13th. What's gone on there? That must be Kieran, yeah, Kieran Ryan's good gone off the track in the Phoenix, so he's rejoined in 14th. Hamlet rejoins in 12th. And Euler has got through on Cooper. The 4th and 5th down into turn 1. That was easy as pie. There he goes. 
We knew that one was coming. 57. Still heats to beaks on it. But currently, in this current situation, Euler will have the championship. However, there is still plenty of laps to play for. Sure. I saw Tom Vandervoo playing with someone's power cord, was that? Internet? Did I hear Ethernet cable? Pulled out. <laughs> Shock. They come. Exemplary racing by several of these drivers here today. Beak really pulling one out of the bag. Both TMOs doing their team proud as they have done all season. Midnight Motorsports, damage limitation doing exactly what they have to do. Their fly in the ointment can only really come from Lewis Redshaw in the Hawkeye, and I'm not sure he's going to be able to. Cantonen's up to seven because Weeks is in from what was seventh. He's now down to eighth, and I'm sure that's where he will rejoin because Junt and Lugnowski are just coming around the start finish straight now. So yeah, he's out well clear. Umala 11, Hamlet 12, they're one lap down. Schroten 13, Kieran Ryan 14, Vinod Moodley two laps down in 15th position. So all finishers are looking to score. What that does do, interestingly, is equal ST racing and constant racing for 11th position in the old championships, which I think will end up going to constant because they got a 7th position, courtesy of Schroten, I believe, earlier on in the Belgian Grand Prix. So... It is a close one. You know, 46 drivers have scored this season. Including Paul Joseph, who's the only person on one point. Even Scott Bennett got two. Even I got two in my league. So something. <laughs> Now 1.2, down to one second exactly between he's to be and Parisis. A bit quicker round the twisty section. Parisis much faster in the straights, which will be good for when he gets up onto the back for a potential toe. We've got to get there first. He's to Beak's made his tyres go longer. And he seems much more capable of doing so. Holding on. Now if I was a team boss of Midnight Motorsport right now. And I wasn't signing Alex Cooper for next year. Now would not be a good time. To tell him that he's not got the drive. Because what he could do is quite happily go and retake that fourth position back. Say screw you guys I'm going home. And Redshaw's not making inroads quick enough on Euler and Cooper. He is ever so slightly, but we're talking tenths. And he needs seconds, or at least half seconds, to make an impression. So, he's to beat. You couldn't have asked more from him today. He's done what he can do. Time being, I don't think Parisis is done yet. <laughs> or Casa, for that matter. as we are hitting the 10 to go marker be a tricky one So 61 drivers took part this season. 
Suppose in anyone who's new, specifically for this race. Menno Clomp. Yeah, Menno is new. So 62 drivers have taken part this season across the 13 teams. Great to see wide diversity of drivers take part as Parisis closer than what he's been for a while. It's going to be where he's now up to temperature and he's going to have a go. Cooper actually only under a second from Euler. He's closed that one back up again. <laughs> I know, we know that's not going to happen. I know. I just like to get a little stick and put it in the poop poop and stare it a little bit. Mud pie. I should have got some musical instruments out. <laughs> As we hit the last few laps. What you all home in style. Nigh on every other battle. Pretty much sorted out. Luknovsky's seen off Junt in the end for 9 and 10. Imala's ahead of Hamnet far enough. Schroten's well ahead of Kieran Ryan and Moodley's on his own. Luknovsky's only a few seconds behind teammate Week, so that may still be yet to happen. Canton's on his own, as is Redshaw, who is closing in slowly on Cooper and Euler, but we know that status quo. Kassa is just three and a half behind Parisis, who is now just four temps behind Heesterbeek, and this is the one for the lead. Four temps between them. Eight and a bit laps to go. What can Rude do to hold on? Parisis has really come into his own in the second half of the season. Overshadowed by Kassarev, so slightly in the first half, but he's turned the turtle and the tables for the second half. Probably the closest matched teammates, I'd say, on the grid. Controversial there. But they're never far apart. Probably the only team that was able to match them in terms of closeness would be the Red Archer duo of David Junt and Jason Muscat, who's not here today. Reese's looking menacing. He's got the straight line speed to be able to just keep eating in, eating in, eating in. And he's got the tyres. much quicker on the slower to gear section so much down to car set up and driver preference as well some drivers just can't deal with being able to hang it all out around some of the slower corners to gain the ability to be faster on the straights others would much prefer to lose out on a straight slightly but just have a smoother ride around the actual corner itself so that you're in control a bit more I think that's the difference between where these two have gone, at least for this race. Again, the gap. Three temps. Again, slightly quicker from Parisis. I don't think he'll be nearly close enough to have a look down into turn four. The Delago. I've not, I've not called out these names in these corners for a while. I'm just calling out randoms now. <laughs> Cass is not pushing in either. Three seconds back, so it is definitely a two-wayer for the time being until they take each other off. <laughs> Moiler and Cooper have lost a second to Redshaw over the last two laps. That's going to be interesting. Bridge will have a big mountain to overcome if he gets there because he's going to have to deal with both Midnight Motorsports to affect the outcome of this championship. You're just the three seconds between the Nord Zone duo, nothing changing there. Don't panic, you're not missing out on any action anywhere else. Everyone's being good drivers. 
There you go. Have a doggy biscuit. Oh, no, they're not. Be not moodly. Oh, dear. That's not quite how you get lapped for the third time. And moodly, keep it going. You're on for a point if you can. But that was a bizarre one. He'd come out from turn three. And, yeah, he lags out. It's like the car doesn't turn at all. And he just drives slowly off onto the grass and then veers it back off. Was he looking the wrong way? Who knows? The car is still in one piece. Amazingly, all wings are attached too. So Vinod is just going to blollop it around. But that would have been a scare as the leaders come round to lap. <laughs> the Green Stripes racer who is, well, well known. Harley Hamlet has been in for a very late stop. That's a shock because that has actually pushed the Constant ahead of the ST. That gives Constant 11th position in the Constructors' Championship, which will be good for Constant. Obviously, it's their last time and they can bow off with not being last, but that's going to not help ST going forward. As Euler and Cooper... Hmm, they're a bit nose to tail. I don't know if... Euler will appreciate Cooper running quite so close. I know we know nothing will happen. Take a quick looky on uh, 1096 for Cooper. We got on Redshaw. 1088. So he's closing. That's Redshaw's fastest lap so far this race. The gap down to. 3.8 seconds. Maybe that is Cooper just saying, do you know what, you might want to hurry up slightly. <laughs> of course, all it takes is a an errant Vinod. You never know. Easter Beak pops around to lap Kieran Ryan. Now there's a wild card if ever you saw one. <laughs> Getting out of the way beautifully in the Phoenix. That car, that Phoenix car, they had such a awkward start to the 2013 season, did Phoenix. Didn't score until Hungary and that was only a singular point. But the points since then have kept coming and apart from three races they've then scored in every single race since then that year, this year. So it's been good fun. He just pops a lap on Ryan there. Phoenix cemented in ninth because Green Stripes, unfortunately, Bart DeVos's retirement stopped them being able to leapfrog Phoenix in the way how they are at the moment. And with Kieran outscoring Vinod, that looks set to stay the same. Lap 68 completed. Lap 69 started two to go Easter Beak has done everything he can cling on to this lead I don't think Parisis is done yet Euler still sitting in fourth still looking like the championships in his swing Redshaw is still closing but nowhere fast enough Hope Cooper doesn't have a pedal failure. <laughs> I've got to ramp up the drama somehow. <laughs> drama, drama. Well, Canton and Week still three seconds ahead of Luknovsky, so there's been no change there. Then it's Junt, Tumala, ha Schroten, Hamnit, Ryan, and Moodley. Oh, still going. So everyone's going to score. Nice. Oh, Petakaza out of engine failure. Oh, my goodness me. Engine failure. Well, that sealed the deal. Petakaza retires with three, two laps to go in the Brazilian Grand Prix. What a turn up for the books. And that has really played into the hands of Lucas Euler and Sim Bitcraft Midnight Motorsports. He's to beak with still a lap to go after this. Defending from Jim Parisis. He's going to be sitting there thinking, oh, bugger. Because sadly, 
That has now really helped Oella because Cooper can then go all vigilante and say, I want the podiums and still take it. And Oella is fine. So he's to beak. Nicely done. Dropping down the order. He will still score. He's going to be classified 13th or 14th, depending on how well Kieran Ryan does. But that's not quite how he wanted. He's to beat and Paris to start the final lap. That's Harley Hamnet ahead, who they're going to try and get round and get lapped. Hamnet gets well out of the way for both drivers. Thank you very much, Harley. Beautifully done. Up ahead is Luknovsky, I believe, and Weeks battling over 7th and 8th as they get through. He's to beat defends like crazy. Just two temps between them. The closest they've been so far, Luknovsky, I don't think, will be caught, actually. I think they're going to be all right. But he's to beat, goes round. Marisa stays there just for the time being. This has all got a hint of Brazil 2008 about it. He's to beat is going to take potentially the win here, but actually the championship will be going elsewhere. He's done everything he possibly can. I've said it time and time again this broadcast, but a championship. It's a full season and you need to be there on as many races as possible to make sure that you will get the results you can. And Rude Heesterbeek takes victory at the Brazilian Grand Prix for GPVWC Super League and wins for Nijo Racing. A valiant second for Jim Parisis. Third position here is Peter, uh, sorry, Lucas Euler in third coming round with Alex Cooper right behind in four. And look at Redshaw, he's right with them in fifth position, but Oil has got it as they limp around. It'd be just about Redshaw's just going to miss it. I'm surprised he's been able to catch that quickly. But here comes our champion, Lucas Euler takes the Super League Championship for GPVWC 2013. Beautifully done. Alex Cooper fourth, sealing a great run for Midnight Motorsport, who stayed the Constructors' Champions for 2013. Lewis Redshaw fifth for Hawkeye. Oscari Canton in sixth will come home just ahead of Jordan Weeks in seven. Pavel Lugnovsky will be eighth. So it's a Hawkeye five six, a Nord Zone seven eight. David Junt in his last appearance for Red Archer in ninth. Kernow will get ten with Mikhail Tumala showing that without Lou Morris they can still grab some top tens if not podiums. Roy Schroten eleven for Constant in their final run of Super League. Well done to them. Harley Hamlet 12, two laps down for ST. Beats Kieran Ryan for 13th. What does that do to their uh, positions, actually? Because that swapped things around at the last minute. Nope, we're all right. Then Petr Kassa classified 14th with its engine failure. Vinod Moodley grabs the final point of the season. 15th for Green Stripes, three laps apiece. Your retirements, Tom Vandervoort crash and then give up. Uh, Bart De Vos crashed out after being lag-hitted by Kieran Ryan. Mark Fuller crashed out, lap 26. Andrew Morgan, bizarre pit lane crash in lap 21. Very Roberto Moreno. Then it was Ben Warren crashing with lap 10. Alvarez crashed out too. Toyka crashed out with damage. Klont out on his own too. And Mark Stanton I only survived one lap. Before that all went wrong. So... Lucas Euler is our champion from Rude Heesterbeek. Jim Parisis is third in the standings ahead of Petr Kassa. And Alex Cooper is your top five. Lewis Redshaw will move up into sixth in the championship. Dave Carsmith will stay in seventh, despite not racing since Canada. Tom van der Voort will still be in eighth ahead of Jason Muscat. And Lee Morris rounds out your top ten. Then it will be David Junt, Adam Rouse, Bart DeVos. Jordan Weeks will move to 14th. Steve Verloy, I think, will stay 15th ahead of the rest of the field that continues right the way down to Andreas Walters, who took part in one race way, way, way back and did not finish the last 62 runners and riders. The constructors...
for the constructors itself. Midnight Motorsport win that one ahead of Nijo. Torrent Motorsport move very close, but don't quite grab the third, I don't think. Then it's Norzone. Will do they stay fourth? Yes. By owing to the fact that they got a seven and eight, they'll hold on to that. Hawkeye will be fifth. Then Red Archer, Kernel, Woods Racing, Phoenix beat Green Stripes. But Constant will be 11th you ahead of ST12. And Halcyon will drop to 13th on the very last race, which is important for the team budgets. Coming up for 2014, we will have a funky montage that will finish off this broadcast. So stay tuned for that once we've done the old interviewage. And they're starting to filter into the old broadcasty booth now. And the man who we've got ready to kick us off with is fifth placed position man and fifth in the Constructors' Championship as well, User sadly. To your channel. It will be Lewis Redshaw. And you came within a couple of seconds of potentially changing that championship. Talk to us about it. Uh, yeah. We did get quite close at the end. I was just trying to get as close as I could. Um, if, I, if I could have, I would have tried to and get him, so unfortunately now sadly for you guys Nordzone actually put up one of their best races in a very long time to come home directly behind the two Hawkeyes so you will stay fifth in the Constructors Championship but I think when you look at the very start of the season actually you can be very proud of how you've gone yeah I think so especially I mean obviously last year we came third in the Constructors I mean that was due to something else so we can't really count that but when you consider where we started and how we've progressed and getting a podium it really hasn't been too bad a year, really. And for yourself, obviously, um, rumours are you're off to pastures new for next year, although no one quite knows what green grass you're going to be chewing the cud on. But, obviously, 2014, you've had your first taste of champagne on the podium. Are you looking for more of that and maybe even a top stop itself, I assume? Yeah, first, I just want to say thank you to Hawkeye and Rick and Oscar and everyone, really, because they've helped a lot this year, especially Oscar with the setups. So I'm a bit sad to be leaving, really, because I think we could have had something really good next year, but I've made my decision. Um, I'm not going to say where. But, yeah, so we've we've done really well this year. I'm really proud of them. Awesome. So we'll see you in a constant. Uh, or Phoenix, I hear. Or Dave <laughs> thinks it's Kerno, so... I think you've been the little whore that's been around on every single place. I've, I've signed everywhere. I'm just waiting to see which one. Ah. And what, what, was, what was this comment about you making about my chest, I hear? It was very ample. <laughs> right? Well, okay. Brit okay. Brittany does have an ample chest. Yeah, okay. So it, it makes sense in the context, I promise. But I'll give oh, you I cuddles so. and love later. Oh, I'll see you in a bit, mate. Mm -hmm. But... Do, 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 do. User left champion! Channel. Champion! Lucas Euler is in the building, everyone. Oh, yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Are you pleased? Because that didn't look like it went quite User to plan. To <laughs> that was one hell of a tough race. Um, yeah. First of all, before I talk about the race, I have to thank the whole team. Um, Alex, Nick, Dave, and David. <laughs> well, the Dave. Um, <laughs> they've done a fantastic job. As well as uh, James helping in the first part of the season. Um, without them, this surely wouldn't have happened. So, thanks to them. Yeah, the race was, well, I, I had a good start, but Jim had a worse start, and because the grid was so so narrow, I had to back off a bit. Unfortunately, the engine bogged down, so I had no refs, and um, Van der Voort touched my rear and damaged my suspension or diffuse, I don't know. It was quite difficult to drive in the first stint. Um, then we discussed repairing. We did repair, which in the end was definitely the right decision, because... From the second stint on, the car felt at least better. Was able to get closer to the times instead of being a second off. And uh, the last 10 laps felt like, I don't know, the whole race distance. Petter had his engine problem, my engine was at the limit, so... Uh, my nerves. <laughs> but you, uh, it's a mark of a champion that you were abused <laughs> and you had lots of problems. But you still made it look like it was taking it in an, a Lucas stride. And I think that's what makes you a champion. So when you're looking back over the course of the season, um, are there any particular things that kind of stand out to you as moments that you're particularly proud of? Um, well, I think, well, especially Suzuka. 
because we we struggled pretty much a lot of the season to, to find the grips with the with the mod. Um, it certainly wasn't my my most favorite one, uh, but in Suzuka we had a step forward and we were able to get back a bit and, and win the race. Then uh, that helped. What I'm not so proud of is the mistake in Monaco. Uh, next year I do want the Monaco race without a crash <laughs> because that cost uh, a lot of points. Um, there's always room for improvement. Um, I think we did very well this season, but I think 2012 was a lot better. So, um, but we won, so <laughs> nothing, nothing huge to moan. Uh, I'm just happy now. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Alex is in with us too. Um, you've both obviously sealed up the Constructors Championship last race, but this must be a little victory lap of honour where you've kind of gone, yeah, do you know what? Actually, we rocked. I don't know. I was just as nervous as Lucas in that race. I mean, when I was with him all race, I just didn't know what to do. But I guess our strategy worked and Lucas managed to get what he needed. But yeah, Look at the end... You looked like you was primed for good rear gunner slot should you be attacked from any position because Lewis was coming in quite quick towards the end. Yeah, we turned down the engine after um, Petter uh, blew his, or whatever problem he had, but uh, yeah, Lewis was quick again. I think we, I had the gap under control. Fabulous. And for yourself, what, what holds for you for 2014? Because I think you've shown to a lot of people that you have the ability and the pace and the roundness of a high top tier driver. But um, I don't know where you're going. You may have already announced it, but I don't know. So um, what would be your pitch to anyone? Uh, no idea. You'll have to ask Dave and Nick. Um, I'll definitely be staying within the midnight group but where I'm racing who knows well I think you guys need to take a beer enjoy let your hair down you two going to GPVWC day uh, Lucas is I don't know about me yet I need to start on my passport first ah well Lucas I think there's going to be plenty of drinks waiting for you when you arrive <laughs> yeah and what will you do to celebrate lucas um well i actually plan to maybe drive over to my mum because it's my mum's birthday today so <laughs> <laughs> happy You're birthday mum i'm champion whatever yeah. <laughs> right, she will understand and if not make her <laughs> oh she yes. probably was watching so <laughs> Ah, happy birthday, Mrs. Euler. Yo, shout out on the broadcast. You're famous now. Excellent. Well, I think this has been a fantastic year of sim racing here on GPVWC. Thank you so much for being with us over the course of the year. Thank you to my commentators across the season. We've had Tom Parker, Oscar Hardwick, Ollie Woods, Nick Rowland, um, I think that's everyone that's joined me over the course of the season. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you with me. As always, there is one man who is soldiering on behind the scenes who never gets the credit that he deserves, and that's Simon Melhuish, who puts up with all the technical worries and the cameras, and that is why he is cameraman extraordinaire. Be good to see him out on track for the ITC event. You lucky Jamie sod. Same, I can't do it. Remember to join us for that on Monday because that's going to be one hell of a ride. It's a new thing for GPVWC. And um Anyone that's come from the GRC routes will feel right at home. So pull up a chair, comfy one, and get yourself settled. From me personally, thank you so much for putting up with me over the course of the season. Um, this broadcast in particular is dedicated to Sean Edwards. We miss you and we, yeah, we miss you. You guys will take care and we'll play you out with this awesome montage. Bye for now. Channel switched.
28 laps of high-octane action GPVWC Super League is about to go! 